Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Aang, absolute peak perfection. My childhood, probably even your childhood, an absolute undisputed masterpiece. Beautiful, elegant in every single way. And when I saw the Netflix trailer for the light adaptation, I was actually pretty happy, pretty pumped. The scenes they show were straight up from the show that I remember. Scene for scene, in fact. The CGI didn't look bad, it looked pretty good. The characters, absolutely spot on in most cases. Even, even what they wore was 100% one-to-one from the show. And I got excited. Now obviously there was that red flag that the original creator left the Netflix adaptation because of some issue. But I was willing to overlook it at that point. Because, well, the trailer looked amazing. But now, the trailer is passed, and now we know a lot more information. And it does not look good. It looks like it's gonna be real bad in actuality. Avatar The Last Airbender is one of the most cherished cartoons ever made. It's an True. absolute masterpiece. And when you think of Avatar The Last Airbender, do you also think of Game of Thrones? I imagine for all no. of you with a functioning frontal lobe, the answer to that question is a resounding no. Which means you are not a showrunner for the live-action Netflix adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender because for some reason- Essentially, I'll spoil it now for you, okay? Surprise, surprise! The Netflix show showrunners are woke idiots. It happened again. It happened again. And these absolute goofball-brained goobers think that they needed to change the show around to appeal to a Game of Thrones- No, 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 no. They, they, they just forgot their usual saying, modernized for modern audiences. <laughs> what a beautiful saying that you know is gonna lead to disaster. Thrones audience for some reason. I don't even think it's necessary to even entertain that delusion, but I'll do it briefly. Why? Let's just state the obvious here. Avatar aired on Nickelodeon. It's a cartoon. That is a children's station. Well, to be fair, nowadays that, that means it definitely needs to be uh, filled with an agenda. I mean, how can you make even a children's cartoon that is not literally an agenda ridden a, uh, you know, flea-infested flea creature. How can you even make that in the modern day? Now, of course, Avatar is a cartoon that transcends just like a child-appreciated show. All ages can appreciate it, but it is family-friendly. Bro, the biggest battle in Avatar, is it a cartoon or is it anime? Ooh, now that's a spicy one. Game of Thrones has titties and blood and shit out the wazoo. It's totally different. Why would you want Avatar... To be morphed into something <laughs> Game of Thrones no. adjacent. It makes no sense. That is the most out of touch oh, Netflix corporate suit decision I could have ever imagined out of a boardroom. Oh, we need to tap into the Game of Thrones audience. Why? Also, yeah. for the most part, the Game of Thrones audience is dead and buried with the fucking colossal flop of season 8 being such a fumble. Now, of course, House of the yeah, I was gonna mention, House of the Dragon, though, is really, really good. Dragon helped revive it a little bit, but even still, this is just beating a dead horse. No, it's more than that. This is, like, mutilating the corpse of a dead horse. It's it's disgusting. You're defiling True. it. True. I just can't understand that decision at all. It's like if you were doing a live-action adaptation for the Care Bears and making it dark and gritty for no reason. Yeah, we saw all the whimsy and the childlike fun of Care Bears, and we wiped our ass with it. We said, it's time that Care Bears gets with the program in the 21st century. It's time that we adapt Care Bears to fit the modern audience, and we wanted to tap into fans of the Human Centipede franchise to welcome them into the Care Bears Smart. universe. Just, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, I already made a video talking about, like, the first trailer that dropped for the Avatar series, and like I said, visually, I think it looks pretty good, and I had somewhat of an optimistic outlook on it, but, I... Oh, I didn't see it, I just saw the original trailer. Can't go back in time and watch it, sad. I had to mention that I was still very skeptical, because the creators of Avatar walked away from this Netflix adaptation quite a while ago, stating creative differences. So the actual creators that put together this masterpiece left it because they yep. didn't like the direction was going and now as it gets closer to, to but the trailer looked fun for one which you saw in the cartoon that's so, that's that's the saddest part the saddest part is that they are 
that they are intentionally marketing it as a one for one to the actual cartoon. Big, and why are they doing it? Because they know if they don't do that, they they, they will fail. But when people understand, probably from the first episode, I guess in this case, that Katara probably instantaneously takes absolute charge of everything that's happening and uh, Sokka gets uh, castrated, because why not, honestly, at this point, right? And uh, Aang just needs to do Katara's bidding for the uh, uh, for all of ever. It's, it's going to be a disaster from episode one, probably, at this point. Release, it comes out at the end of this month. It's pretty clear why they left. It's because they're changing all of the most important fundamental aspects of Avatar. It's very clear why the creators would have abandoned this pile of shit. It's not looking good. Visually, it's certainly better than M. Night Shyamalan's Sin from 2010 with the last Airbender movie. But narratively, <laughs> it's looking like it could be even worse Damn. somehow. Over the last three days, there's been three bombshell new pieces of information from staff of the show yeah. that just really raises a lot of red flags and sounds the alarm. So this was the first one about wanting to appeal to Game of Thrones audiences. The showrunner saying that it couldn't That's just stupid. be for kids. Dummy, it was never... At this point, it's pretty much not for kids in the first place because everyone who's going to watch it is probably 30, 40, 20, 25 and whatnot. Like, dude, this is not going to be watched by kids. Or just for kids. Avatar The Last Airbender is one of those few cartoons that everyone of all ages sings the praises of. True. Because it appeals to everybody. True. It was never just for kids. And you don't need... Well, it wasn't... Okay. It was made for kids, but they did cover uh, things that appeal to adults also. It was primarily made for kids, yes. But they didn't exclude adults. Some themes, some stuff that happened in the show was for a uh, more, more adult theme, essentially for adults. I need to prove that it's not for kids by introducing a Game of Thrones style narrative to it for the drama. I don't even know how they're planning on weaving that in there, but I can't imagine that's going to land very well. Also went on to say, it had to also appeal to the people who are big fans of Game of Thrones, so it had to feel grounded and mature and adult in that way too. That's the tightrope that- What the hell? What part of Game of Thrones feels grounded in the modern age? Nothing in the Game of Thrones universe feels grounded to people currently living. We have to walk. No, you don't. You can just not walk that tightrope because it's nonsensical to do that in the first place. Yes. This is like if Nintendo would have come out right before the Mario Bros. movie released and said, we knew in order for Mario Bros. to succeed, we needed to appeal to John Wick fans. So we had to make sure Mario Bros. felt ground... That sounds good, though. That does that sound, that, 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 that sound pretty good, not gonna lie mature and adult in that way too it was our tightrope we had to walk it's just fucking baffling it's mind-boggling why does avatar the last airbender need to appeal to game of thrones fans in any way shape or form the idiot benders over there at netflix have lost their marbles they're off their gourd right now well well they were considering a she-hulk season two well they were considering a velm season two well, I hope film season two is going to come out because I hate to watch that thing and I absolutely loved every second of how nonsensical and crazy it was, not going to lie. But, but yeah, I mean, Netflix has done worse things and stupider things. So, them Game of Throning uh, after The Last Airbender, the, I mean, kind of part of the course for them, isn't it, on one hand? with this direction and this is only one of three big alarming things they've said the biggest one is by far their decision to completely change one of Sokka's main character arcs that he goes through in the show apparently they're toning down Sokka's sexism in the show stating I feel like we also took the I forgot that this was honestly even a thing I remember Sokka uh, yeah he he did say woman can do this but Usually, he five seconds later got proven wrong by, well, anything he said about that. It it, ne it never felt bad. It, it it just was like he says one thing and then gets proven the other. It it never even felt woke. 
it, when I've watched uh, parts of it as an adult, because I watch, hey, I get recommended some avatar clips time time on YouTube, and I click on that without hesitation. Okay, it's simple, and it never feels like that. I, I completely missed the part about this because Sokka just gets proven wrong about his opinions. And he gets proven wrong about his opinions in the best ways possible. Not by some purple-headed lunatic screaming at you telling you're wrong. But by actual action and consequences. It's great. I, I nev This never even slipped my mind that this is actually a thing until I heard about this. Check out the element of how sexist Sokka was. I feel like there were a lot of moments in the original show that were iffy. He is a flawed character. That's yep. the whole point. I don't know why studios are so afraid of flawed characters now where every character needs to just be morally perfect off rip so then they're extraordinary. The woman characters need to be perfect and inf infallible. That's why Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, there's a storm brewing inside me is getting another season. Oh boy, that's gonna be amazing. Fairly uninteresting and don't really have any character development. The whole point was Sokka started off very flawed. And he goes through this development where he learns, oh, women can be badass warriors too. It's not just men. It's a huge component of his character and his growth. That is one of the main things that he first goes through. And apparently they've just wiped their ass with that. Now, yep. they didn't say that they've entirely removed it. They've said they've toned it down. Of course, no telling. Hey, if modern day Netflix tells me choose between we toned it down, he he ha ha, and we removed it. I honestly am kind of willing more to pick the remove part because when they say tone down, that, that's where I start to sweat because that does not sound good at all. How much, but still, why do that? Why have that play a backseat when in the show that was pivotal to his character growth and development? I also find it comical that this aims to be more mature and adult, seemingly wanting to appeal to Game of Thrones fans. And yet, they're watering down the elements of the original children's program because they believe adults are too fragile to handle it. That's just so laughable to me. Kids could handle it back then, but times are different now. We need to make sure that the adults are coddled as much as possible. It's gotta be Weenie Hut Jr. and super sterile. Well, to be fair, I do think that makes sense and they do have a point. Adults nowadays need to be cuddled. Again, again. Get 10 Americans in the room. Call them stupid and watch how half of them are gonna uh, gonna go uh, schedule an emergency meeting with their psychiatrist that tells them that they are as special as they come and they they cannot do any wrong. So they they do actually have a point about that part, cuddling adults. But we also have to make sure it appeals to Game of Thrones fans. And once again, this begs the question I've asked a million times when it comes to this shit. Why are you adapting this in the first place? What is the point of your live action adaptation if you're going to change the most fundamental elements of what you're taking from? You immediately... To rewrite history. To ruin something that was once great. Alienate the fans, and you're not bringing in any new fans from doing it. You just stand to lose. It's a lose-lose situation all around like we saw with Halo Season 1. Now, Season 2 does appear to be going a different direction. Maybe they've learned... No, they haven't. I have heard about this about Season 2 of Halo. Oh, it's gonna be good! They learn from them! Yeah, how often does Netflix learn from their mistakes? <laughs> Never. There's a reason Disney lost $2 billion last year. Okay? And they're not stopping. Learn from the mistakes, we'll see. But this is once again falling into the same fucking mistakes of why are you adapting something that you don't even seem to like or get in the first place. With further evidence from their most recent statement saying that Aang will no longer be, you know, going on any side quests or taking any detours. He's just going to be all business all the time, which runs counter- That, that is ex- yeah. The first- No, not the first season fully, but the, but the initial start of Avatar, the, the whole story takes place because Aang ha uh, had had trouble accepting the fact that he's an Avatar and that he has this responsibility towards the uh, the world that he did not even ask for. That is his story. That's why he ends up where he is in the first place. Because he runs away from responsibility. Making Aang 100% all business? 
is a super bad well obviously it's a super bad decision but yeah it kind of ruins his character a, a huge part of his character at the uh, at first is accepting that as an avatar he has a responsibility towards the world well i i honestly kind of no wait i don't understand y you think that the modern insanos would want to ditch that idea that he even has a responsibility to the world, that he is a free spirit and can do whatever he wants and blah blah blah. So that's just a strange choice on both sides of the aisle. ...to one of Aang's big, big character traits, that he just wants to be a kid, that he wants to have yep. a childhood. In fact, the whole thing starts with him running away from his responsibilities. He never wanted to be- Everyone who has seen Avatar, even if that was 20 years ago, you know that this is exactly it. Even as a kid, you understand, understood his motivations. The Avatar, and he wanted to just be a kid. But in this show, that I guess that's not going to exist. He's just always going to be all business all the time. And they have to know that. They're making the conscious decision to just fuck everything because they believe they can do it better. And that hubris has ruined so many of these. Yep, on point. That, that is actually exactly my opinion. They, they take all, all, all of the existing things and then they look at it and say, Pff, we can do better. This is garbage. He's in the past. Avatar The Last Airbender has to be one of the most talked about shows probably ever. If you just type in Avatar The Last Airbender on YouTube, you'll get thousands upon thousands of video essays going over all the nuance of the show, all the- True, true, true. <laughs> I have seen a lot of them. Plot elements and everything that makes it so special. It is a show that has stood the test of time and is still actively discussed to this day, so many years later. So there's no way the people that worked on this are somehow ignorant to these things, but they are just choosing to completely change them I don't know, I think he gives way too much credence to these people. They are that ignorant. I do think they are, unironically, that ignorant. For some inexplicable reason. I don't get it. Why adapt this, then, if that's the case? A lot of money is going into this. You can tell that it's a high-budget production just from the trailers. Visually, it looks True. pretty impressive, especially compared to the 2010 counterpart. So why waste all that money? You could have just done a more faithful adaptation, and I've always said... I don't really see a point in adapting something one-to-one. -one. I do believe you need to take creative liberties, but not when it comes down to the most fundamental elements of what makes that property special in the first place. You can interject your own style and your own creativity into that universe while- How about you don't, though? Anyway, uh, that was our boy, Charlie Penguin Z Zero. <sighs> Man. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna love hating every single moment I watch it. I'm gonna hate watch it. I hate watch The Walking Dead the last seasons where it was beyond atrocious. And I loved it. I I hate watch film and I loved it. If this is as bad, I'm gonna love the hate watching this also. And I'm gonna make 25 billion videos about it also. It is what it is. Anyway, this was Quizzer Said Sen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and have a nice day. Bye bye.